So I, I think it might be probably a good idea for us right now to just we've kind of talked about, you know, the purpose and all that kind of stuff. But I think we should maybe cite a couple of our favorite examples of setups oh, and yeah. payoffs. Uh, uh, just for reference to the uh, to our audience so that they can maybe grasp it, the concept a little bit better. I'll lead because it looks like you're thinking please. of one. Yeah, I'm thinking hard because it's going to take me a second. I probably should have prepped you on that. but um, <laughs> That's all right. Have you ever seen a movie? And I hope you have, because if you haven't, I'm going to beg you to do it before the next time we watch a, uh, we have a podcast. Have you ever seen Return of the Killer Tomatoes starring George It's been Jordan. a while. It's been a while, but I really we watched that movie together because you yes. want you want to show it to me. I enjoyed that's, it a lot. That's right. I did discover this movie in college and I did make you watch it. Do you remember <laughs> in the middle of the movie, George Clooney works at a pizza parlor? And yeah. I forget what's happening. The movie's ridiculous, by the way. If you haven't seen Return of the Killer Tomatoes, you need to. It's a master class in comedic setups and payoffs. Um, there's a moment when George Clooney or the other guy, I forget what his name is, they throw the dough up in the air like when they do when they're making pizza pie. And something else happens and like the, the dough never comes down. And nothing, like it just gets forgotten. And it's almost like, if you were watching it now, you would automatically assume it was a B movie. Oh, plot hole! Look, they forgot about catching the pizza. Da 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 da. Yeah. In the, like, the spoiler alert, the last five minutes <laughs> of the movie, when like everything has ended or whatever, the pot, the, like they're in a completely different location. It's been like hours later. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, the dough that. falls <laughs> right on top of George Clooney, and it's just like the best payoff ever. Um, yeah. That was, was definitely. Just... Go ahead. Now that was a good one. I was just thinking one that's a little bit more abstract and a little bit more. Um, it's more story. It's more like a story arc, story arc setup and payoff. So, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. All right. Yes. You have the scene where um, Charlie and his grandpa they're floating up right, and they're about to. They take him the fizzy Lipton drink or whatever it's called. I can't quite remember, but yeah. you know they're gonna get chopped up by the blades. They burp. They fall down. Right. Right. That is actually, it's really interesting because I never really thought about that, but it's actually a setup for later, like the end of the movie, when they break out of the glass ceiling. And what that is, is it's a setup for, initially you're like, how are they going? Initially, it's an emotional setup. All right? Okay. Because originally, they are flying, they're floating, and it's dangerous. Does that make sense? One, yeah. One thing? All right, yep. so follow me. Um, Next, they get into the elevator and they're flying and it's now liberating. So it's a payoff in the sense of now you're seeing them doing the same thing, but now it's in a way that is in a positive light instead of a negative light. So that to me is like another way of doing a setup and a payoff where it's not. I love that. It's not directly obvious, right? Yes. Directly obvious ones are great. Like your example about the, the pizza dough. It's a great joke. It's a great yeah. setup for a joke. This one is more like it's a way of thinking about setting up and paying off in a way that is thematic, basically, because it's all in it all goes into the kind of the themes in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where it's like success for Charlie is something that's never, never available. It's not something that's possible. And then suddenly these events take place where it does become possible after, you know, several different kind of trials essentially or one major trial really yeah uh, i i see what you're saying and now that it, now that you mention it i'm starting to see that it's a little bit more integral to other genres in different ways than i had originally thought of um while you were talking about that for some reason i started thinking about sentimentality because you were talking about it being thematic payoff and stuff like that and i started realizing that my wife watches a lot of those Hallmark Christmas movies and this and that, but a lot of that cheesy romantic stuff that ends up happening is always the result of a setup and a payoff. It's very on the nose uh. and <laughs> obvious, but yeah. you know something? That's the stuff that my wife and other people who enjoy that particular sappy love romantic drama, that's what they go for. It's like, oh, the pen that she lost is the one that he wrote that letter with. And 
that's so special. You know what I mean? Like that, that is, ends that is up... definitely the heart of like a romantic, like um, what's the word? Romantic story, right? Because you yeah. want, you want, like you're saying, it's integral. You want everything to sort of come back to the beginning of their, their first meeting, the first time they met. Or something that happened disastrous yeah. in their particular, you know what I mean? Because it's always, you know, oh, the guy and the girl hate each other and this is why and da 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 and, you know, it's it's always something that's tied to that. Like he, oh, no, he values his job more or something like that. And then, then he quits because that's why he loves her or whatever. But now I'm starting to think um, that it is integral to almost probably every single genre. There is a, an expectation for it to be in genre. And I remember the last time you and I talked about this particular subject, you brought up the most recent Tarantino movie. And yeah, that's kind of I've a got, drama yeah. action movie. I know you let's forgot. Say, that's why I wanted to bring it back up. But go into it, sir, because this th this was yeah, totally new. So, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, one of my one of my most recent favorite movies, um, has this great setup and payoff where, at the beginning of, kind of at the beginning of the movie, when you when you learn about like uh, all the movies that Rick Dalton has been in. Uh, when you learn about his career, one of the movies he does is this World War II movie. He plays like a soldier in World War II. It's kind of a callback to Inglorious Bastards. Um, I'm sure it's some reference to some World War II movie that Quentin Tarantino was into as a child. Sure. But in that movie, like in that the movie within the movie, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's Leonardo so hard DiCaprio's, with Tarantino. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio's character uses a flamethrower to like fry Nazis. And you don't think mm -hmm. anything of it because there's it's all just this a cool story. Moment. That, yes. Yeah. There's all this story that takes place, you know, between this and the end of the movie. And you're not really sure how everything's going to land. Everything is sort of setting up, but you don't realize it's setting up at all. Like no. you don't realize that you like go to the 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 uh, Manson family ranch. You don't know why. Like it's just kind of a thing that happens. A lot of thing, a lot of stuff happening in that story where it's like it just seems like things are happening. But then the last act of the movie everything comes together right everything <laughs> like, literally everything that happened all the mundane nothing moments yeah, that you've been like, like why is this buys like an lsd lay cigarette <laughs> at the beginning you don't think that's gonna go anywhere well he ends up smoking it and you learn about you know the relationship between him and his dog and you think it's this is just like a nice scene yeah actually <laughs> this is set up <laughs> this major event that happens in the in the last act and so the flamethrower comes back in like one of the most surprising shocking like holy shit scenes <laughs> that i don't I, if, i'm sure a lot of people have already seen it but if you haven't seen it watch once upon a time in hollywood it is like one of my favorite examples of a setup and a payoff where it's just like you don't not you do not see it coming at all and when it all when it all connects, it's like one of the best, it's one of the best payoffs I've seen in a movie in a long time. Yeah.